Good evening guys, welcome to another advanced refrigeration online controls training on the Emerson E2 controller. Today we're going to be going over the condenser control setup. So I'm going to teach you guys how to program a floating head condenser and a standard condenser, both using UltraSight and using terminal mode. So via the controller, like how you guys would normally see it on site. So let's get this started. So first things first, you're going to log into the controller. I'm already logged in. If you get this little guy up here and I'm in terminal mode. So first things first, we're going to hit the menu button. We're going to go down to six, which is add or delete applications. We're going to add an application. We're going to hit F4, which is lookup. And we're going to come down to six, which is condenser control. We're going to add one. And yes, we're going to wish to edit. So now we're going to change the name. So name whatever. So rack A. I usually make it like 70 SCT. So SCT, saturated condensing temperature at 70 is my target. So you can call your long name, whatever, floating head pressure, whatever you want to call it, uh, rack A. So we'll come down here to this condenser type. Now we have a couple options. If you hit uh, F4 lookup, you can have three options here. You're gonna have air cooled, which is the standard uh, condenser, no floating, set point stays the same all year round. Uh, this is an older school setup. So if you're just trying to maintain pressure, old school, uh, it, you'd choose air cooled. Evaporative would be a cooling tower. So an evaporative cooling tower. Now each one of these is going to make different options appear, just like uh, you're selecting the menu. It's going to it's going to make different options appear. So the evaporative is going to give you options for pumps. Uh, air cooled is just going to give you standard options. Differential is going to be what we're going to go over today. So differential is going to be our floating head pressure condenser setup. You shouldn't be using anything besides differential unless you have a cooling tower. If you have a standard air cooled condenser, you should be using differential. I mean, floating head pressure saves a ton of money, so we're going to go over differential today. Okay, next we have up control type. So if you hit F4 lookup, you have two options, pressure or temperature. So you could use a temperature sensor. I don't know why you'd really want to do this. I mean, if you were strapping it to uh, the drop leg, I mean, it's going to be kind of laggy. Um, you want to use pressure. So we're going to go off pressure today. It's going to automatically convert in differential. It's going to convert the pressure to saturation temperature. So we're going to be controlling off saturation temperature. So next up we have uh, fan type. If we hit F4 look up, we got a couple options here. We got uh, single speed. So if it's just a single speed on off motor, like a normal condenser is what we have, we have a two speed. Generally don't see this uh, a lot. I've seen it on some older stores we have in like downtown Chicago where they have two speed blower motors and the condensers and parking garages is the only place I've ever seen them. So it has two different contactors, so it has a high and a low speed. So it'll give you different op options for outputs for high and low speed. Variable speed, so this would be used if you had uh, a VFD and you didn't cycle the fans at all, you just ran the VFD. Or if you had like uh, EBM motors, PAPS motors, where they're all running at the same speed and they're all running off each other. So you choose variable speed. VSS combined. This is what we're generally gonna be running if you have a drive and you're cycling kit contactors together. So this gives you the ability to also control the fans and the drive. This is what you wanna use in setup. You wanna use VSS combined. So that way you could drop out fans and still control the drive and tailor the condenser to maintain so it's not cycling all over. CT drive is going to be an Emerson CT drive and then CTSS combined is going to be a Emerson CT drive with um, dropping out fans. So we're going to choose VSS combined to so show you guys how to do the VFD also. Okay so number of fans we'll go six fans so you're you're going to choose by how many outputs you have. So a lot of condensers will have a fan splitting relay. So say you have a 10 fan condenser. 
generally you won't control all 10 fans because you would need two boards. We only have eight outputs on a board. Okay, but if you only needed five outputs and then a split fan relay, you could split the outputs in half. So instead of needing 10 outputs, now you only need five. So when it goes into split, it's going to drop out half that, that side of the fans. So we're going to go six right now. So this would be a 12 fan condenser. Uh, refrigerant type, if you hit F4, look up. You're going to have all your refrigerant types in here. If it's not in here, you just need to update the controller. Generally, everything's in here. So we're going to choose 404 for today. Okay, and then down here you have split enable. So we're going to change this to yes. So it's going to enable all the split functions. So split mode, you have two modes. Hit look up. You have first half, meaning the first half of the condenser. Second half, second half of the condenser. Odd, even, and none. So I always choose um, odd or even if I'm controlling all 10 fans. If I'm controlling off a of split relay, I will put um none and i'll use the split relay to do it so right now we're going to go even so it's going to split the even fans so it'll split two four six okay so if we go down to split strategy you have two options here hit look up you have ambient or capacity capacity takes into account the load of the suction group and the load of the condenser when it's staging fans and split not a big fan of this. Uh, Hussman was using it with Aldi on the protocols and the CDRUs. Caused a lot of problems. A lot of times we switch it back to ambient just for the fact of how many problems it causes. Causes. So there's that. I always choose ambient. It gives you a much better control. Now we're going to move on down to split when and reclaim. Uh, this is an option you don't really use too often. Um, depending on the customer, we don't have a lot of heat reclaim up here, so we don't usually have to split. So, I mean, if you have a huge heat reclaim and you're taking up a lot of load, you may need to split when in reclaim. So that way you're not logging as much gas in a condenser. So set point reset enabled. So set point reset, if you go to the so when set point reset is in, set to yes, the active control set point will be varied depending on the ambient temp. When set to yes, three new properties appear under the set points tab. Ambient no reset, ambient max reset, and ambient max pressure reset. So not one I use a whole lot. So if you come down to equal runtime enable, I generally do not use this. If you do this, it'll it'll equal the fan runtime around. Um, you want your header fan running first, so you don't shock the header. So I don't really use this at all. Uh, proof fail enable. So this would be if you're using uh, proofs for the fan contactors, whether you're using CTs or uh, digital closures. This would be if you're proof of fans. Never really seen anybody use this. I mean, it'd be great. So that way you know you have fans out before you go there but I mean it's a high cost item so generally people aren't using it and then down here we have fast recovery enabled which we'll changes yes fast recovery is once it hits a certain pressure set point threshold it's going to throw the condenser out of split shut off reclaim and it's going to um, force all the fans on and drive it a bypass so fast recovery delay I generally don't put a delay so well, Scroll right past it. Hold on. I leave the delay at zero. Okay, minimum capacity set point, max capacity set point. So if this is not set to zero, what it ends up doing, the minimum capacity set point is the lowest possible percentage of total condensing cooling capacity that will, that will be allowed to be active when this value is set to any percentage higher than zero. It'll treat all PID outputs values lower than this set point as if they are equal to the set point. Meaning, in other words, if the minimum capacity is 10%, the PID will always leave at least 10% of the condenser capacity on. You don't want to, I see a lot of customers and I see a lot of guys put this at 10%. It ends up causing a ton of issues in the middle of winter time because the condenser won't go lower than 10% for the, that. It may leave a fan motor running. It may leave a drive, depending on, it'll put the condenser PID at 10%. So 
So the output will be 10%, whatever it ends up being. So whether it's 10% of total compressor capacity or, or I'm sorry, condenser capacity, I mean, they could be quite a bit, especially when you need to kill the condenser completely when it's minus 10 outside. So I always set that to zero. So if we go to the next tab, it's gonna be our set points. So temp differential set point, that's gonna be your TD and your condenser. So that's gonna be at whatever uh, the, the legend says and the manufacturer says of the condenser. Now, mind you, that TD is kind of a made up number. So they have a design spec of what it's supposed to be, but it's usually way lower than that. So usually if they say it's 10 degrees TD, generally it's closer to like eight or seven. I mean, you gotta remember these condensers are all oversized or should be, or hopefully they are, and not undersized. So you gotta remember when the load changes, the TD changes. So, I mean, I generally don't like to set mine at 15 for medium temp, I think it's insane. It ends up causing head pressure issues. I usually go 12, but usually 10, 10 and 15 are your general, 10, 10 and 12 are your general for uh, medium and low. Um, so on here, now a lot of times, like this is a, this is a writable uh, set point. So you could actually write to this. So I actually change my TD. So when it's above like 87 degrees outside, I change that TD down to three and then I fake out the outside air temp sensor. So this is so I could set up uh, a max cooling set point, a max temp set point. So like down here, you see you've met a minimum temp, temp set point. That's gonna be our saturated condensing temperature target. So if our lowest saturated condensing temperature we wanted to get is 70 degrees. So now we're gonna put 70 in there. So if it's at 70 degrees, it's gonna bump the head pressure to set point to 80. If it's the outside air temp is at 80 degrees, it's going to bump it to 90. If it's at 90 degrees, it's going to bump it to 100. So it's always trying to maintain 10 degrees above the ambient. Now, if it gets to 70 degrees, it won't go any lower. So if it gets to 60 degrees, it won't, it'll make the ambient output 70. If it gets to 50 degrees, it's still going to be 70. 40 degrees, it's still going to be 70. This is minimum. So on the, the, Flip side of this, we don't have a maximum set point in Emerson. Dan Foss does, uh, Microthermal does, everybody but Emerson has a max set point. So let's keep going. So if something happened to the outside air temp and it was reading 120, it would be a 130 degree condenser set point, which is insane. I mean, you're just wasting energy at that point. You're running the pumps harder. Everything's gonna be harder. So I always fake out this number, but we're not gonna go over that right now. We'll go over it during the flexible combiner one. So temp shift during reclaim, a lot of customers use this. They actually force up the head pressure during reclaim. So on this one, so you could put 10 here. So when the reclaim is active, so if your set point is 70 and your reclaim is active, it'll shift it up 10 degrees. So it'll make the condenser set point 80 degrees. Um, not the best because you're wasting energy. Like up here, gas heat is cheap, so it's cheaper to run the gas heat than it is the uh, to run the rack up, so I don't like to use it. So fast recovery set point. This is gonna be the point at which everything kicks on. I generally shoot for 300 pounds. If it hits 300 pounds, sometimes 285, it depends on the customer setup, it hits that set point, then it's going to kick all the fans on. So fast reclaim hysteria, so is a set point that keeps the condenser from short cycling between normal and fast recovery after fast recovery has begun. So the condenser will not exit fast recovery until fast recovery input has been has fallen below the fast recovery set point minus the hysterias. So meaning it's a 10 pounds. So if it's a 300 pounds, it has to fall to 290 before it comes out of fast recovery. Sometimes 20 pounds, it just depends. So on split set point. So I generally put, if I'm 185, so if it hits 185 pounds or 180 pounds or 185, whatever you put in there, it's going to on split. So if it hits that pressure, it's gonna on split the condenser. So ambient split set point, uh, 50 degrees, 40 degrees. I've been seeing a lot of them down to 40 degrees now to make that 70 degree SCT. Uh, reclaim split set point. So like we were talking about before, if you guys had heat reclaim, this is where you could uh, you could tell it to split when it's in reclaim. So you make this one 70, so it's 70 degrees. 
it'll split and reclaim. Ambient split dead ban is going to be your dead ban for your split set point. So your ambient split set point, and there's your dead band. And then on split dead band is 25. I usually put this at uh, 5. So I usually run them both at 5. So on split the to split delay two minutes, that's fine. I, I generally don't have to run it any lower than that. Low pressure set point. So I set that at generally whatever my holdback's gonna set in at. So if I'm trying to make 100, 133 pounds, is my whole back setting. I set my low pressure set point to that. So that way it kicks the fans out so the fans aren't fighting the, the condenser. So low pressure hysteria, same thing. It's uh, It would have to raise up to 143 before it turned on, turned on, uh, killed the low pressure. Now the fan minimums, if I'm using a VFD, I take out the fan minimums. So, so fan minimum off, fan minimum on, I take those out if I'm using a VFD. I leave them at 30 seconds generally if I am going to, if I just have a standard condenser where I'm just cycling fans on, I'll generally leave them at that. But if I'm uh, using a VFD, I take those out. Okay, now TR temperature. This is one that's important. This is uh, your throttling range basically for the condenser. So the TR temperature throttling range is a range in which temperatures around a condenser controlled PID determines the percent called for. If you're running a VFD, 10 degrees is fine, works great. If you have fa standard fan cycling, it is going to run terrible. So if you're running standard fan cycling, make this 25. Start with 25, it's a good number. You may end up at like 17, just you may just have to go from there. Um, but Generally, that's where your tuning starts at, is this throttle range temperature. Uh, if you're running a VFD, 10 is fine. I've gone down to 7. The lower you make it, the more reactive it's going to be, the, the, the PID is going to be. The higher you make it, the slower the PID is going to react, so you won't have as much cycling if you just have fan motors on and off. Okay, so next we have minimum liquid percentage. This is where your, uh, your receiver alarm is going to be if you have it set up in the, in the condenser group. I like to go higher than 10, but most customers are 10. I usually go like 15. I'd like to know if there's a leak before. And then here's your delay for your low liquid level. So that is your set points tab. Now we're going to head to inputs. So we have a couple of inputs here. We have pressure control in. This is going to be whatever is controlling the condenser pressure, whether it's drop leg pressure, discharge pressure, temperature, whatever it is. So you always want to use drop leg pressure if you can. So if you put a board point in here, you got two options. You could look up, you could choose the the board, you could put the board type the board points in here. So we'll choose the liquid pressure, the one that's set up on my air conditioner. Okay. And then down here you have discharge drip, and you want to use the discharge transducer for this. Now that, that's going to be your absolute discharge pressure, whatever it's going to be. You don't want to use drop leg pressure for this because if you, especially if you have hot gas and you have a DDR, that DDR could close and you could have a high discharge uh, situation. So you want the discharge trip to always be on the discharge. And if you come down here, we have drop leg pressure and drop. Uh, now we have drop leg pressure down here. And we also have uh, fast recovery. So fast recovery is always going to be discharge pressure. Okay, discharge trip is going to be discharge and um, drop leg pressure is usually the same as pressure control in. So a lot of times you'll see pressure control in and drop leg pressure doubled up. So they're going to be the same thing. Reclaim in is going to be your reclaim active set, po set point. Your emergency override is going to be whatever it's going to be. Your liquid level is going to be your percentage. Your input, your drop leg temp is going to be in here. Your ambient temp is always set up as global from the beginning if it's something different so you have four racks on here you would uh go down hit the space bar across all these and then change it to board point and then you could change your input so that that would change it to a different input if it's not set up as the uh ambient temp in 
Generally, I rewrite this through a flexible combiner and I fake out the outside air temp sensor. So I do that to, as part of that floating head set point. So that way I could fake out the uh, outside air temp. So if we go to next tab, this is going to be your variable speed setup. So you get your variable speed condenser set up in here. This is how it comes from the factory. I generally go like 5% on the motors. Some motors you can go lower. Some motors require 10% minimum. Um, <clears throat> say if it's a 800 RPM motor, then, or an 840 RPM motor. So then like, I generally go about 100 RPMs. Sometimes you can get down to 50 RPMs. If you're using EBM motors, you can get way lower. So we'll take, make this 850, whatever it is, and then come down here. So your variable speed increase and decrease rates. This is how fast the controller is going to ramp up the motors and ramp them down. I see this all the time. Guys will put these at 2000. That is the absolute worst thing you could do. It just makes this thing hunt all over the place. So I generally go 450 on increase rate or 350 depending and I'll go 450 to 500 on the decrease rate. I'll make the decrease rate faster usually like I'll usually I'll go 350 on the increase and I'll make the decrease faster so that way it is slower to build up and ramp the fans up so that way I don't have this uh, overshooting and I want it faster to decrease because I don't want it to undershoot. Inverter reset delay, this is going to be the delay on how long it takes to reset the inverter if there's a fault. And then inverter reset count is how many times it's going to try to reset that. So inverter reset action, if you go to this and hit the question mark. So by default, whenever a VS condenser fan inverter goes into alarm because of a failure, the VS fan is bypassed to zero effectively disabling the fan. If you desire to change this value to on, 100% will result in the fan being on all the time. So if you have uh, so if you have EBM motors, you want this to be set to yes. You always want it to be set to 100. You want it to fail at 100% if you get a drive fault. So inverter alarm, this is where your alarm point would be. Your inverter bypass, this is where your uh, your bypass output is going to be. In this quiet mode, I've never used it. Don't. So in here, now we have our fan outputs. So VS fan state, a lot of times I use this one for my drive enable. So this is, uh, if all the fans are called to be off, I'll generally use this for my drive enable and disable. So I'll type my drive enable in here. I can change this. See, instead of for area control now, I can set this up to alternative I.O. formats, and I can go board and point, and I can use this control and output. Okay, VS fan out, that's going to be your analog output to drive your drive, whether it be uh, an input to a drive control, like if you're talking to the drive, so an area control, or if it's a point, it's on there. So VS fan RPM, that's going to be more of a logging thing. It's going to be uh, your uh, logging your uh, variable speed fan. Inverter reset, that's going to be your output to reset the drive if there's a fault. VS alarm out, that would be a logging point or if you actually have some kind of alarm light. VS inverter bypass is going to be your bypass output. And then down here you have your fan outputs. So that's going to be your fan contactor outputs. Um, that's going to be set up to be your fan. So that's where you would you would punch all your fan motors in. So if you go to the next tab, uh, this other route, so split valve. This this could be used for two things. You could use to control your split valve, and you could also be used to control your fan splitting relays. And so you could tie two things to it. Um, that's going to be your split valve, your, your splitting, uh, whatever you're using to split, your... Uh, actuator so that's going to be your output so then alarm out that's going to be your alarm refrigerant temp out is that's going to be a graphable point so a logable point so that's going to be your refrigerant actual temperature so your saturation temperature discharge temp out same thing it's a writable point uh, temp control value out so these are all writable points 
So these are going to be, see how they're all logged up? These are set up for the log from the factory. If there's no L there, you have to set the logging point up for it. So again, like we went over before, if you hit F3 edit and you go down to logging setup, and you hit F4 lookup, so base log, and now we're going to hit the stairs. Now that one's got the L next to it, it's logged. So refrigerant type out, all this VSS percentage is going to be your condenser setup. These are all writable points. These are things you could write to other points. We have the next tab. So this is going to be our, our advanced tab. So set point position is center of TR. If you go down to set point position, this is going to change where it's looking at the throttling range. So set point position field refers to where the set point lies within the throttling range. By default, this field is set to, to end, which means the set point is at the top of the throttling range PID percentage. It equals 100%. So if desired, you may change the set point position so that it's in the middle of the throttling range. So I usually set it for middle, so center of TR. Okay, then by default, your P and I values are all set to 1. So we don't use the D, the D gain usually in HVAC stuff. Um, we're not the, getting with that that precise control. We're just doing a, a PI loop most of the time. So um, what I'm going to tell you guys is one and one works okay. It's not the best. It ends up making uh, it controls real weird with the VSS combined. It ends up cycling contactors off and not shutting the drive down where instead you want the drive to go to minimum position. And uh, you want the drive to go to minimum position and before you start cycling motors off. So generally, I'll take the eye gain out. We're gonna have a whole nother video of, uh, on tuning, tuning uh, PID loops. So if you go down to this and hit the uh, question mark, it's gonna give you uh, a bunch of long answers. So the proportional gain determines how large of a proportional mode, how large of the proportional mode P value mode of the condenser loop fan control will be. Larger values of proportional gain translate to larger changes in PID percentages. So the higher you make that number, the higher the, the reaction is going to be to it. So I generally lower these. I'll take the I gain down to zero, and I'll try to tune the P first. I'll start at like point, point 0.2, and I'll just slowly keep creeping it up until the condenser starts to like trim out. And then you want it to kind of flatline the graph. And then it's going to, I'm sorry, you want it to have like spikes in the graph, just slowly spikes. So it's going to be reacting to that error. Now, what you end up doing is you end up adding the I gain to it slowly, like point, uh, point two five or point two at a time or point one at a time, depending on how it is. And that's going to, that's going to correct the error over time. So once you get the spikes down and it starts running a little more smoother, you start adding the eye gain in and it'll start smoothing out that condenser. And what it ends up doing is as you're tuning this, it ends up cycling the uh, drive down to minimum position and then cycling the fan motors off. You don't want the fan motors banging on and off on the drive nonstop. It does a lot of damage because now you're starting to stop in that drive a lot and you're changing the amp draws and you're starting the drives under low RPMs. I'm sorry, starting the motors under low RPMs. So you want them, you want that thing to maintain the better, especially when it's cold out, the least amount of fans you have, the better it's going to cycle because you need to get that condenser capacity down as close to matching the ambient as possible. So, I don't recommend you guys mess with that unless you actually understand the tuning of it and uh, I've gone a little more into it. I may make a video one day of me actually doing one and tuning it. I mean, it takes a long time. You gotta have some uh, time sitting there messing with it. So we go through this thing, it's all filled out. So if we went back to this and changed the condenser type to 
air cool or I'm sorry evaporative okay now we have uh, a couple of different options we have pump run time uh, minimum fan on and off we have reclaim set point same as before we have evaporative over over set point so if you go to this you hit the question mark so evap, evap override set point will override the pressure or temperature value that will be initiated by a fast recovery in the evaporative condenser. The E2 looks at a combined value of override inputs and compares the combined value to the set point. If it's higher than fast recovery mode, it's, it's active. I don't do a whole lot of cooling towers um, that we have control over. Generally, like all the cooling towers that we have, like downtown Chicago, we get uh, supplied water from, so we're not actually controlling them. We're just getting supplied water. As you can see, our TR pressure is like it is 50, so it's really high. I mean, you can lower that down to 25 and try to mess with that. Um, if you look in here, now we have uh, the evaporative override. Uh, we have a pump uh, enable. So if you're using some kind of float, I mean, you could tie it to the pump enable in here. If you go in here, we now have uh, under outputs. So we have fan outputs and there should also be a pump output in here too. It's gonna be under. So yeah, evap out pump out one, one and two. So it gives you outputs for two evap pumps. So if you had uh, spray pumps to spray uh, water on the condenser for the evaporative, it, it'll do that. So that, that's all it changes. So if we go back and we make this air cooled. Okay, now it's air cooled, we go to set points. The only thing it's gonna change, so now we have a pressure control set point instead of the temperature. So it's gonna be at 200 pounds. Our set point is 200 pounds. And you see down at the bottom, our TR range is at 50. So it starts out you at 50. Um, 50 is not horrible. I mean, if you're trying to tune it, I usually start with my TR range. I don't usually mess with my PID. And uh, if I don't have a drive, I'll just control, uh, I'll start messing with my TR pressure. And I'll start moving the TR down or up, depending on how bad the condenser cycling. Like I said, I mean, you may need to move your split up. I mean, you may, when it's cold out, it's going to cycle bad no matter what until you drop fans off and get that condenser to kind of not hunt. So I've done it by adding uh, fan fan delays. So usually fan on delays. So that way I could let, so say you have, you know, three fans staging it. You have one fan, two fan, three fan. You kick on, then you overshoot. Well, if you put in like a 45 second delay, so the first fan comes on, it is 45 seconds to the next fan, 45 seconds to the next fan. Well, in that 45 seconds, that second fan running, you may not kick the third fan on and it may it go fall below that PID set point and it may not overshoot that way. So start with TR pressure and um, mess around with that. And then messing around with your fan delays is probably better than messing with the PID with a standard setup with no drive. That's where I'll generally start by tuning it. And it all depends on your setup. I mean, if you're if you're just banging fans on and off, I mean, it's going to be hard. You may need to mess with your holdback valve, kind of get it farther apart. If your load's rapidly changing, that's also going to affect it. So, I mean, getting that load and the defrost taken care of will make the condenser more steady. So if you get the compressor cycling to cut down, your condenser will be a lot better too. That's why like digital heads and VFDs on compressors end up making the whole rack run better because you think about it when you got a compressor starting and stopping, what's it doing to your head pressure? It's raising and lowering it nonstop. So, and it's trying to react to that. Now, if that's gone and it's more steady and it's more stable, then it may not cycle as much. I seen, I'm doing a job right now. We were at 320 cycles in the condenser by like noon. I mean, that thing's probably gonna have six or 800 cycles on it. Think about that, it's a huge energy uh, cost. If you put it, if you were to save it, put a drive on there, you would cut that down to nothing. So you save a ton on there. 
this rack also has horrible capacity control and it also has like 250 cycles on a compressor by noon so yeah fixing that compressor may have a bigger impact than fixing that condenser so adding a drive to both would be the best but adding a drive to that that compressor would probably uh cut down on the condenser cycling probably in half i mean because that compressor is not changing that set point like that so now we're going to go over this in ultrasight in a second i want to show you guys uh where to save this we'll go to the condenser app now so right here we have uh rack a 70 set we have our fan output so the fans are all off so fan states is on so it's calling for the fans to be on meaning uh the controller is saying it's okay to run mode is discharge pid percentage is at 100 because our inputs are open split is inactive discharge pressure is none variable speed rpm 120 variable speed percentage 16 variable speed supply percentage 100 so the VSS signal is at 100%, our VS RPM. So see, it's 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 creeping up. So this is where that increase rate and decrease rate is. So we're increasing those RPMs now. So you want it to go slower because you don't want it to overshoot. Now this is where guys will say, well, you're going to trip the high head. You, you could you could trip on the rack high head. You're not because you're going to hit that 300 pound set point and say your control with it or your uh fast reclaim with the 300 pounds up here it's going to kick all the condenser fans on and ramp everything up to 100 right away so you see our fans are all on so the your, your run times here you got your cycle counts here so if you click on fan one for example and hit enter go to expand information it'll tell you how many times this thing turned on and off uh, the last change, the last time it went on, the override value, cycles today, cycles yesterday. This is one thing you want to check. You want to check your cycles for yesterday. You want to look and see how many times you're cycling on and off. So see, we're not we're not shooting up real quick. We're going slow. We're at 540. We're at our variable speed percentage is at 66 percent. So we're we're ramping up slower. You want to ramp up slower. You don't want to, you know bang on bang off bang on bang off i mean at 2000 rpm ramp up and down is terrible so you got our our outside air temp here so if you hit enter and you go to detailed statuses so again we have all of our set points here this is going to give you all of your set points so your pressure shift this is a quick thing so you can just look through this you hit the next tab so it's going to give you your inputs so this is our pressure control and we have a fail so fl next to here means we have a failed sensor so if you're looking through here and you're like wow this condenser is running 100 percent i go through here i have a fl my pressure control inputs failed my ambient temp is right here my shutdown whether i have a shutdown circuit the digital it's not active i don't have anything tied to it if i had a shutdown circuit in here if it said on meaning it's in shutdown if it's off it's not so we go to the next tab we have our variable speed uh set up our quiet mode percentage we're not using that so then we go to the fan outs so we have whether our fans are out if they're on our variable speed rpm our variable speed fan out which is going to be our supply signal to the vfd uh our variable speed fan out so all your information's in here then you have your alarms in here your split valve inactive so if it was on it'd be on your alarm out is on because we have a, a alarm our pressure control value out our pressure control set point our control pid uh, fast recovery set point and if it was actually psi on here list it so if we go to our next tab we're back over here so this screen gives you like a a, a better view of what this main screen is it shows more inputs and outputs on it so if you don't see all the inputs and outputs on here just make sure you're in full hit alt f that's another thing so and, and if you need to see more stuff going down to this detailed status tab is killer a lot of guys don't know about this and this is on every set every application in the e2 this detailed set point tab will give you all the inputs and outputs that are in here everything that's controlling it your low pressure set point everything in here that controls anything will be in here so if we come out of here and we're going to exit out of terminal mode 
Okay, we're going to sync this thing. So we're going to go site synchronization. We're going to sync the site because we did all the programming in there. And we're going to come down here. And we're looking for our condenser control. <laughs> I do not see it. Where is it at? There it is. Blind today. So we we'll click on that. And we're going to go to edit application. So this would be how you set it up in the in UltraSight. Same thing as the E2, just way better. So you come through here. We have our name. We have our fan type, VSS combined. So everything's drop down menus. Number of fans, split enable, yes. Split mode, you can change it to none. You can change it to any of them. Split strategies ambient, split when it reclaims, you could check all these, split, reset, enable, equal runtime, you can go through all these. Go to your set points tab. Okay, so we'll change this back to differential so you guys can see this, differential. So you go to your set points tab. So you'll see this, if I click the three dots on here, I got my options. So I could change it to a board point, I could change it to a pointer, I could change it to board point, I could change it to a fixed value. If it's a pointer, um so if it's a pointer you could choose an app, another application to put it to same thing with minimum you could you could write to this so anything that's got a tab next to it is a writable point so if you see these three dots next to it you could you could write to these set points so you could write to to this 133 pounds, you could change your low pressure set point. Anytime an ultrasight, you see the three dots, it's a writable set point. So your TR down here, you could change that. <clears throat> so if you go to inputs, same thing. All these are writable. So you get your three dots. So just like the E2, you get your pressure control in, usually the same as your drop leg pressure, discharge, whatever you're using. Ambient temp, usually it's either coming from uh, its own application or it's coming from a board point or it's coming from the global data uh, from the setup. You get your VSS setup, so minimum speed, maximum speed, your decrease rates, everything's in here. So fan outs, so you come down here, you get your all these three dots, they're all set up. You get your everything set up to log in here. You got your same thing as the E2, your VS fan state, all that. Other outs. So I changed under here. I want to show you guys. I changed the split mode to none. If you change the split mode to none and you go to other outs, now you have a split fan output. So if you're not controlling every fan contactor from uh, a RO point, meaning you don't have, say if you have six fans, you need six outputs if you only have three outputs and you're splitting up a uh, split fan relay if you change it to none it populates the split fan relay for you so same as in the e2 so this is where you put your split fan relay your split valve and all these are going to be your uh, other outputs you go to advanced same thing you have your same uh, pid settings so your emergency out multi-type out I never use this multi-type out. Um, it's more of like a trending alarm setup. I have yet to use it. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time going over it because it's not a lot of, uh, it's not what my customers use and I'm not seeing a lot in the field. So in, in, under this input output state, this is one thing where it's a little bit better in UltraSight. This is that same screen, that expanded information screen that we went over just, just a minute ago inside of the E2. This is a lot easier to see everything on. So generally I'll go to this and I can see my variable speed alarm out, my control pressure, my ambient temp, my shutdown, my split enable, my low pressure set point, everything's on this screen. So I mean, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot just looking at this. Um, my variable speed fans out is at 100%. All my fans are on. My variable RPM is 850. My split valve is inactive, my fast recovery is not on, my control PID is at 100%, my fan uh, state is on, meaning I, I usually use that for my drive out, my drive enable point, my fast recovery is none, 
output is none. This would be the value if it, if it was showing, if it was actually tied to anything right now. Um, my temp control value out, my set point, I don't have an input for that right now because it's not set up. Uh, my alarm out is on, my analog status is okay. VSS supply signal, so that your drive supply signal is at 100%. So everything's in there. So we made a change, we hit apply, hit okay. Now we come out, so it updated. Now if we go to graphical status, I have shown you guys this. This is the nice, like, pretty screen graphics from 1994 in this controller. I mean, you guys got to remember this, this. This program is from, like, Windows 95. They haven't updated any of this graphical stuff. So up here, I mean, this is more for, like, a customer looking at it or, like, a junior tech. So it shows fan 1 through 6 on PID out percent 100%. Your variable speed down here, your ambient temp up here. You can, if it's got a graph point next to it, you can graph it. So it's going to give you the graph for the last couple of days. You can see in Chicago, it's been pretty miserable. This is uh, pretty close. It's probably picking up my furnace fan because or furnace output because it's a lot colder than that. Uh, control value, you can graph that. Whatever that control value's been, I don't have a pressure transducer set up on this, so it's not set up. So if you go to set point, it's 70. So you can see our set point's been hanging at 70. You want to graph that when you're looking at it. Oh, go back to graphical set point. And then your shutdown is not active. Split is inactive. Ambient temps, it shows the set point. Fast recovery is not active. So fans on. If they were off for like a phase failure emergency, it'd be up here. Um, it would say like global phase failure emergency, stuff like that. So, and if you go to condenser control, you can see summary. If you go to unit summary, it'll pull up everything. So you see, could, now if you're looking at the unit summary, you can see rack A, you can see the, you would see the control value, the set point, Temp control value out, temp control set point, RPM, condenser state, variable speed. So that is how you do uh, generalized programming on the condenser setup and doing the uh, TD. I'm going to make another video eventually when we get into the flexible combiners of how to make a TD reset for the max TD. So once it hits a certain TD, or a certain uh, outside air temperature, it won't keep rising it up. Like I said, that's a huge, huge issue from when uh, you have, uh, say your outside air temp gets to 100, it's gonna make the set point 110. So I'll show you guys how to fake that out. An easy way to do it, then uh, with some flexible combiners. So until then, uh, I appreciate you guys listening and uh, like and subscribe. So we could uh, grow this channel out a little more, guys. And uh, like I said, we appreciate you guys listening.